Fathers, love everyone and welcome to the Daily Devotional for July the 22nd. From finders keepers, finders of truth, (laughs) keepers of faith. Today's quote, if you're going to be a true Christian, I'll tell you one thing amongst others. It's a lonely life. It's a narrow way and it becomes narrower and narrower and narrower. As from Leonard Ravenhill and how true it is. The household of God is called the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, submitted to Him as the head. True believers are His members and are to function properly as they were created, gifted, and empowered to function by the Holy Spirit for the purpose of building up the body. The church is also called the temple of God, indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Contrary to many contemporary church growth experts, the Lord in His wisdom, not man with His marketing skills, is building His church and temple. And the Lord builds with living stones, not dead religious brick and mortar. The Apostle Paul describes all this as a work of the Holy Spirit, who gives life to those who walk in the Spirit until Christ be formed in you. It's easy to see how involved the Holy Spirit desires to be in the household of God and in this ministry of bringing glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He shall glorify me. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Whoever speaks, let him speak, as it were, the utterances of God. Whoever serves, Let him do so, as by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Rather than practice biblical Christianity, popular contemporary Christianity prefers the feel-good, tribulation-free, weekly hour of self-serving prosperity religion and self-help gospel. Cultural fast food religion and one's busy daily schedule often quench and grieve the sanctifying presence and delivering power of the Holy Spirit. There's the constant temptation to pursue God's best life now and sacrifice themselves to television, sports, leisure, electronic toys and prosperity trinkets. Yet a faithful remnant will arise, persevere, and swim against the religious current. It will not throw in the towel when increasingly dangerous rapids arrive. The true church longs for a true revival and a public showdown of the false bales. A heaven-sent revival and spiritual awakening which will arouse the contemporary church out of her stupor. All right, let's take a look at the devotional again with the scripture references in place. But first, let's look at that quote again from Leonard Ravenhill. If you're going to be a true Christian, I'll tell you one thing amongst others. It'll be a lonely life. It's a narrow way, and it becomes narrower and narrower and narrower. I started this journey quite a while ago now, and I can definitely wholeheartedly back Mr. Ravenhill with that quote. It's not necessarily a lonely life, meaning there's no other people around you. 
but it's more like a lonely life spiritually because it don't take long when you become filled with the true Holy Spirit and given discernment to realize just how few there are really following the Jesus of the Bible it really is a lonely life because there are very few you can talk to that understand what you're saying and it is a narrow way that becomes narrower and narrower and narrower because the more we learn and grow and become like Jesus Christ the narrower the path gets but this one starts out reminding us as we read in 1st Timothy 315 If I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtst to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. So we are called to be the church of the living God. We're supposed to be a pillar and grounded in the truth, not what man teaches or has twisted the book to make it say what they want it to say but following the truth that we only get from the spirit who Jesus said would come and reveal to us all truth reminding us of all that he said we can't get that from a book or from a man we can only get it from the Holy Spirit itself who will use books and perhaps use men but he the spirit will always point us to the truth we're supposed to be submitted to him as the head we read about that in Ephesians verses 21 to 24 submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband's head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. They take that scriptures and twist them into all kind of crazy things. But it's basically saying God has an order of things and the head of the church, the head of the body, the head of everything is Jesus Christ. We're also told the true believers are the members of his body and that we're all created gifted and empowered by the Holy Spirit to function for the purpose of building up that body we can read about that in 1st Corinthians 12 27 now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular and Ephesians 4 16 for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love in 1 Corinthians 12 verses 7 and 11 but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all but all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. See, the spirit decides what gifts we get because it knows what gifts we need to fulfill God's will and purpose that he has for each of our lives. And they all are supposed to work together for the edifying of the body. 
We're also told that the Father builds his kingdom with living stones, not these brick and mortar buildings that we see. We read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. See, our Father doesn't dwell in brick and mortar buildings. Jesus came, suffered, died, and connected us back to the Father so He could dwell in each and every one of us and we be, could become the living stones of His temple. The Apostle Paul describes it all as a work of the Holy Spirit giving life to those who walk in the Spirit till Christ is formed in us. We read about that in Romans 8, verse 11. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. In Galatians 4, 19. My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. And Galatians 5, verses 16 and 25. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit was sent here to guide us and to teach us and to help us to walk out our calling that the Father has for each and every one of us. His ministry is to bring glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. And without Him, we cannot be in the body or the household of the Father. We read in John 16, 13, and 14, Jesus himself says, Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he'll guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he'll show you the things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Without the Holy Spirit indwelling in us, we have no hope of knowing the truth of Jesus Christ. But we can listen to man twist it up and make the book say whatever he wants it to say. He can quote all kind of scriptures to prove his point. But I tell you one thing, you better get into that personal relationship with the Holy Spirit because it's the only one, He's the only one that can show you the truth and keep you on that narrower and narrower path. We read in 2 Corinthians 3.18, We all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. See, we can't be born again. We can't become more like Christ. Without that Spirit, it's impossible. Let no man boast in being saved or in fulfilling the law and walking out an ever-increasingly sin-free life that any of it was accomplished of their own power 
It's only accomplished through the power of that Holy Spirit. That Jesus suffered and died so that we could receive and that Father so graciously gives to us. The question is, do we accept it? And more importantly, are we going to listen to the truth it has to tell us? We're reminded, if we're true born-again followers of our Lord Jesus Christ and are filled with the Holy Spirit, that it, He, the Spirit, decides the gifts that we receive so that we may carry out the Father's will in our lives. We read about that in 1 Peter 4, verses 10 and 11. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man ministers, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. See, we can't boast that we're able to fulfill his will and walk the way he wishes for us to walk. Speak the way he wishes for us to speak. Minister the way he calls us to minister. All these abilities and all these things are not of ourselves. They're of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we continually glorify Jesus Christ and his Father. Because without the Spirit, we could never even come close to doing what he wants us to do. That's why this easy believism and popular Christianity is so dangerous. It doesn't even talk about the Spirit. And if it does, from what I see, it turns it into some sort of circus sideshow, flopping around on the ground, laughing hysterically, getting drunk in the Spirit. Oh my God. There's so much out there. It's truly unbelievable. And it's very blasphemous to what the true indwelling power of the Holy Spirit does. Unfortunately, today we find ourselves in an age that rather than practicing a biblical Christianity, you know, what Jesus Christ taught and commanded. They're just happy with their feel-good, tribulation-free, go to church once a week for an hour and hear about how prosperous Father wants you to be and that good old self-help gospel. They don't even realize how that quenches and grieves the sanctifying presence and true delivering power of the real Holy Spirit. There's this constant temptation to pursue your best life now as you sacrifice yourself to your TV or your sports or your toys or your little prosperity trinkets or your YouTube videos or your church preachers 
who just tell you everything's going to be all right. Everything will be all right if you get filled with the true Holy Spirit. If not, it won't be all right in the end. And when you get true, filled with the true Holy Spirit, life isn't going to be easy. The enemy's going to attack. You're going to constantly be refined and remade more and more into the image of Jesus Christ. And that usually happens through persecution and many other things that aren't quite comfortable but are very necessary so that we can come to a true understanding of how much we're lost without that power of the Spirit in us. We can come to a true knowledge of the fact that without Him we can do nothing. But with Him all things are possible. So thankfully there is a faithful remnant that will arise. We will persevere and we will come against the religious current of the day. We're not going to throw in the towel just because it gets a little rough. Just because people put us down or call us blasphemous or unloving or not acting like Jesus because they're looking at the wrong Jesus. We don't give up. We don't throw in the towel. We do persevere. And we do go against the normal so-called religious babble that's spewing forth on YouTube, the television, and most of the churches, you know, those buildings today. We long for a true revival. And we long for that showdown with all these false balls, all these fake Jesuses, fake religions. You don't scare us. We long for the showdown. Sooner or later, hopefully, through the grace of our Father, we can wake up these dead and dry bones that call themselves a church today. Wake them up out of their stupor. Wake them up to the true Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that is alive and well, even though it is in a remnant surrounded on all sides by the enemy. As the quote said, it's a lonely life and it's a narrow, narrow, and narrower path. And I pray you can truly be born again. Get into that relationship with our Father, His Son, and be filled with His Spirit so that you too can endure to the end and shine a little light into this overwhelming darkness. Don't forget to pray for the children and our fellow brothers and sisters all around the world and pray for those still being led astray by all the wolves running around with their sheep's clothing on, tickling your ears and telling you how you can have 
your best life now. Failing to remind you that our best life is yet to come. May Father bless you, keep you, be gracious unto you, and give you peace. I'll see you next time.